start talking into it? Can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Here's your announcement. Now, uh, how y'all doing today? Uh, you know, um, I'm glad that we, we had a couple minutes because as soon as my grandmother walked in and I saw her, I got all choked up. And I got choked up. She's been praying for me all of her life, right, brother? I called her mother because she, she helped raise me. She's been praying for me all my life. My father's right there, and um, I'm blessed to be here. And she's able to see what her prayers did. Because if it wasn't for my grandmother's prayers, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for my mom's prayers, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for my Aunt Minnie's prayers, I wouldn't be here. Because I know them three pray for me nonstop. Them three. My grandmother, used to, I used to talk to her on the phone. She'd tell me, I'm praying for you, Nico. I'm holding on for you. I'm not going to die. You're going to come out and see me. She's going to tell me. She's, she's going to turn 95 this year. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for her, Lord. Let's just, let's pray. Lord, Father God, I just, I just ask you to use me, Lord, and, and, and to put away all distraction, Lord. This is about you, not about me. I ask you to increase right now all the way, Lord, and for me to decrease, get me out of here, Lord. I just, I just pray that you just speak through me, Lord, and um, in Jesus' name, and, and, and just, just give me clarity, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to preach on uh, Revelation 3, uh, the whole chapter, but uh, well, not really the whole chapter, but I'm going to start off first on, on the beginning of Revelation. And um, I had another message for y'all. I had another message for y'all, but, uh, but um, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, wake up, to wake up, right? And so that's the, that's the name of the, the message, wake up. Turn to your neighbor right now and tell him to wake up. Wake up. Because the Lord is coming. Tell him that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Wake up. Come on, say wake up. Wake up. Jesus is coming. Turn from your sin. And go back to the Lord. Let me, I'm going to start reading. I don't know what she put up there or not. But if she hasn't, it's all right. I'm going to read Revelation 1. I'm going to read a little bit and then I'm going to jump to what I'm going to preach on. But it says... Is everything good, Yeah. Okay. The revelations of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants what was what, what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified, testifies to everything he saw, that the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and Blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Jesus is coming, right? We know that he's coming. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, from the seven spirits before the throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve him, to serve his God and Father, to him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, look, he's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. He says the says the Lord of God, the Lord God, who was, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God stirred my heart. God stirred my heart because I want, you know, I ask him every day, what, what can I preach to what, what, what message could I bring to them? Right? Message of faith, of repentance. And this message has it all. It has it all. He, he, he's talking to the, he, it's a letter that they wrote to the seven churches, but I'm going to talk about two of the churches. I'm going to start on uh, chapter 3. Chapter 3, 
of Revelation. We can settle. These are the words of him, oh, to the angel of the church of Sardis. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, or have not found your deeds complete in the sight of God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, obey it, repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come. Yet you have few people in Sardis who have not spoiled their clothes. They walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will be like them, dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the last book of life but will acknowledge his name before my father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen? Amen. You know, it's telling us to repent. It's telling us that God is going to come like a thief in the night, right? But how does a thief come? A thief comes when you don't expect him, right? He isn't a thief, but he's going to come. He's going to wake up one day, and, and the people that are not ready are going to be left behind. You know the story of the rapture? So I'm going to ask you, whatever sin you're holding on to right now, let it go. Let it go. Turn from it. You know, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I started this walk with God here at this church maybe five years ago, and it's been an up and down battle. And I, I thank ja, uh, uh, Pastor George and Dacho and, and Johnny and the pastors here for, for inputting the word of God in me and, and showing me the way I was supposed to be walking, right? This, this scripture talks about a dead church, uh, spiritually dead, right? I, I don't believe that this that is this church. I don't think I don't believe that we're spiritually dead. But I, I, I still think the message of being spiritually dead has to be spoken. Because when you're spiritually dead, you don't want to do nothing, you're lazy. You stay in bed. It's like the alarm clock just keeps going off, 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 off. And God's telling you, wake up, right? He says it right here, he says, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of God, right? We're an ongoing, we're ongoing, our, 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 our walk is ongoing. We're not a perfect, perfect disciple, but it's ongoing. But the main thing is you've got to turn away from every sin that's hindering your walk. Anything that's coming between you and God, it says, for sin separates us from God, right? Yep. Am I right? Yes. Sin separates us from God, right? It says, the Bible says, in Matthew uh, 6, 24, you, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mama, right? You know, a long time of my life, I used to come over here to this master, and I would come over to this master. I would hate one, I would love the other, right? And um, I was a fool. I'll tell you the truth. I was a fool. I kept on doing the same thing over and over, but I expected a different outcome. And if it wasn't for the Lord that got in touch with me, that touched me, and, and, and I, I got put in a situation, like I told you before, where I didn't have nothing but a Bible for 10 years. I read the Bible. It filled me up. I, I read it and read it. My grandmother prayed and prayed. My family prayed and prayed. I read and read and read and read and read and read. Then I got out. And then I came to this church and started walking my walk, right? And then uh, it wasn't until, like I said, uh, until we had a meeting, me, uh, David, Pablo, George, and Dacho, we went to go eat and, and, and they let us know that they wanted to use, they wanted to use us, right? And uh, we, you know, we came into agreement we're going to live holy lives, right? I want to tell you, up to that point, I still wasn't all the way surrendered. Can I be honest with you? I mean, I would go, I would go vacation sometimes. I would drink a little bit, but I, you know, I, I would because I wasn't being used, right? I wasn't being used, but this man told me, I'm, I want you to preach, you know? And I said, you know what? I got to get my life right. I got to get my life right. 
I got to be completely surrendered to the Lord to be used the right way. It says, there, there's, a, there's a scripture that I put here, and it says, um, let me see where it says, it says, anyone, it's uh, Matthew 10, uh, 37, it says, anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me he is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not pick up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So, in picking up my cross, the cross is a sign of, of, of death. You know, you have to die to yourself. I have to die to myself. I have to die to myself. I have to die, die to myself daily. I, have, I made a promise to this man. I made a promise to Dr. I made a promise to all of us. We made a promise together to, to the pastors here that, that I'm going to live a clean life. Right? Because I never know when he's going to call me. I don't know what, what happens. And, you know, the life happens. George could call me. He could say, can you do this? Well, I don't, I don't want to be the person. Well, I don't know. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, I can do it. And the reason I say yes is because I used to do it for the wrong. People used to call me and tell me, hey, can you go do this? Yes, I could do this. Go. So why is it that I could do for the wrong, but I, I can't do it for the right, right? These are questions that I want you to ask yourself. Are you 100% in? Or are you still holding something back, right? Amen. Right? That's, and uh, are you spiritually dead? They say that some, he's talking right here in the, in the church of Sardis, that some of them have not spoiled their clothing. What is he talking about? That some of them haven't went back to what the things that they were going from, right? Some of them are, are walking around with the, the, the clothes, the, the banquet clothes, right? The white clothes, right? And some of them haven't spoiled. Not everybody in this church has spoiled it, right? So, and it says right here, he who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the last book of life. What does that mean? I will never blot out his name. I thought that once your name was written in the last book of life, that it could never be blotted out. Now, am I reading into this, or is it saying that, it doesn't say that he would, he said that I would never blot out your name, but does that mean that someone else's name could be blotted out? I don't know, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to test it. I don't want to test God's grace where it stops and where it comes back. Right? Well, I'm going to jump real quick to a scripture real quick that, uh, let me see that I have right here. It says, uh, Behold, Revelation 16, 15, Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. I don't want to be shamefully exposed. I don't want to be on vacation, drinking, <coughs> partying, drunk. Then the Lord comes and blows the whistle. I'm saved. I'm saved, right? And I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to doubt your salvation here. I'm just putting it out there, right? I'm not trying to get you to doubt your salvation. I believe everybody's saved here. But what if, what if he comes? And I'm completely wasted, right? I'm completely drunk. I'm completely high. He's a holy God. He's he's a, you know, he says he, he, he's a, he, he's, you know, back in the old days, if the priest would go into the holies of holies and they had any kind of sin, they would die, right? Right? right. So, so when he comes and he finds me like that, am I going to be left behind for the seven-year tribulation? I don't know. But I, 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 I believe that I'm saved. I believe that I wouldn't be doing those things, you know? It says uh, uh, faith without action is dead, right? Right. Right? So, so if I say that I'm saved, I should be walking like I'm saved, right? Right? Let's go back to the other scripture. Have a finish it. So the next one I'm going to read is to the church of uh, Lado this is Lysodonia. Lysodonia. To the church of Lysodonia. These are the words. Lysodonia. And this is the lukewarm church. These are the words. These are the words of the Amen, <coughs> the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you neither cold or hot, I wish you were either, either one, whether I wish you were either one or the other, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have, a, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. I counsel you to buy from me 
gold refining the fire so that you <coughs> can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shamefulness and nakedness and slave to one of your to your eyes so that you can see to those those who I love I rebuke and discipline so be earnesty and repent here I am I stand at the door I knock and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in and eat with him and him with me he who overcomes I will give him the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sit down and sat down with my father on his throne he who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Now, he's talking about being lukewarm, but he's still talking about giving them a chance to repent. Right? So God is always giving you a chance to repent when you're lukewarm, when, 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 when you just come short, right? We know that we have to repent. We have to repent, you know, like, I want to go back to myself. So, you know, this, this scripture, when I, I started reading, I was in prison, I read it, and guess, my, her husband, my, my grandfather, he used, to, he used to be up every night. I used to live with my grandmother for a while. I used to go to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, and my grandfather would, I'd always try to beat him up, and he was always beating me, reading the Bible. He used to be up 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, reading the Bible. My mother used to do that, my grandmother used to read it. And then I'll come home, and he was reading that at 10 o'clock at night. And he spoke Spanish, but he, he spoke English, too, and he would tell me, hey, well, come here, I want you to read something for me. I don't really know how to read too good, but he was he knew what he was doing. So what he would do is he would have me go over there and I'd read the word to him. And it would get in me, even at an early age, it would get in me, it would get in me. And he used to always tell me this scripture, don't be lukewarm. Stop being lukewarm. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> what does lukewarm mean? Um, Not hot or cold. Yeah. It means to be right in the middle. I don't know if I want to I love this sin. Come back over here to this guy. Come to this God, that means you still have reservation, right? You still have reservations of what God called you out of. Don't have reservations on what God called you out of. Don't let it go. It's led you to where you're at right now. With me, I'd be a fool to keep on drinking and partying and fighting and doing so. I'd be a fool. I love my grandmother. I want to see her live as long as she can. Everybody's, she's 94, right? Mother, you're going to be 95. Her mother lived to 106. Long life, right, mother? She lived, lived to 106 years old, and she had her mind. She had her mind. So, so, so I need to be here for them. I need to be here for y'all, for my dad, for everybody. And if I, if I don't get over the things that I used to do, if I don't stay sober, right? right? Why should we stay so, sober? Because the Bible says to stay sober. It says in 1 Peter 5, 9, it says, be sober, vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, knowing that the same suffering you experience have been experienced by your brotherhood in the world in Christ, right? So anything that we're experiencing, know that Johnny's experiencing it. Or anything that I'm going through, I know he's done it. I know Pablo has done it. I know my dad. Anybody that's in this kingdom has gone through that, right? But we have to be sober-minded. It says because the devil is roaming around like a lion, roar, a roaring lion, but he isn't the real lion. He's an imposter. Yeah. Yeah, right. He's making a, just a bunch of noise. Rawr, rawr, trying to scare you, right? Wake up, church. I'm telling you, he's coming back. He's coming back, and he's coming back. And he's not coming. He's coming at a time that we least expect him to come. I'm telling you, he's coming back. Are you going to be watchful? Are you going to be the type of servant that isn't watchful? Are you going to be waiting for him? Are you going to be doing your deal? Right? A lot of us want to go to vacation. We want to go here. We want to go there. But the Bible tells us not to be a lover of the world and the things in the world. Right? Not to be a lover of the world. Right? It says in 1 John 2, 15 to 16, no, 15 to 17, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let me read that again. If anyone loves the world, the love, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of the sinful man, the lust of the eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the 
but from the world and the world and in his desires are passing away. Do not love the world. Who loves the world? Huh? Right? Loves cars, going on vacation. We're not supposed to keep our eyes on that kind of stuff. We're supposed to keep our eyes on the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't know. God is just telling me to tell you to repent and that you have your 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 eyesight, your 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 focus on the wrong thing. We all do. I have them too. Believe me. I love going on vacation. <laughs> I do. But but I don't stay stuck on going on vacation. I say if God willing, I'm gonna go over there. See, God laughs at our plans. We can make plans and if God's not in them, they're not gonna succeed. How many people know that? Right? They're not gonna succeed, right? Y'all are quiet out there. Huh? I hope this y'all not getting offended by what I'm telling you, but it's from the Lord. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Stop doing what you're doing. I'm telling you the truth, man. You don't want to end up in hell. You don't want to end up in hell. You don't want to end up in hell. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I ended up in prison because I didn't really care too much about anything. I was crazy. I ended up in prison because I, I just, I just, I just didn't care. I just didn't care. But God got a hold of me. There it was a plan. It was a plan to do this. He started my walk a long time ago, and I didn't know that one day I'd be up here. I saw it in visions. He would give me visions, but the devil would come. It says the Bible says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. He comes to steal with the work what God has put in your heart. Like I said, God put that I was going to do this. My family prophesied over me. They told me a long time ago, you I used to have to go to a church, right, Mother? If I went to your house, I had to go to a church. If I went to my grandma Minnie's house, I had to go to church. So the word was already put in me as a young kid. Then I got a chance to read this word. I read it all. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't be up here if I hadn't gone to prison. Because I would not have read this Bible. I wouldn't have. It was all about me, what I wanted to About the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world. I, 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 cars, uh, you know, my money, everything. It, was, it came between me and God. That's what it says. If you want to be my servant, there's a cost to being a, a servant of the Lord. There's a cost. That was my cost. I had to go to prison. I had to get trained up. I had to learn. I had to realize that God was the only one with me. God was the only one that never left me nor for service or saved me. My family loved me, but I had to put myself in a position where they weren't there for me. It was just God in me. He was doing a work in me. It was, he worked in me. He, he kept on... And he wouldn't leave me alone. I'm telling you, he wouldn't leave me alone. And then I got out, and every time I started doing bad, I, I kept telling you this. And then my grandmother, she's here. She one time stopped and told me, I don't know if she remembers, she told me, what about what you told me you're going to do for God? Remember, mother? She told me, you told me, you told me that you're going to live for God. She, she, she had the nerve to stop me and, and tell me that. She said, hey, hey, I want to talk to you. She told me. I thought, you, I thought you told me that you were going to be a clean person when you got I thought you weren't going to do what you, you, you did. I thought you were going to live for the Lord. You know what? It, and it started something. So for family members right here, women and children, women that have kids, kids, uh, women that have uh, grandchildren, if you see someone messing around, sometimes you have to stop them. Hey, come here. My dad's told me before. My dad's told me the same thing. Stop what you're doing. My dad used to tell me, don't carry a gun. We're going to send you to prison. I used to always carry a gun. Right? So tell me, stop carrying a gun. And I said, say, you know what, Dad? I, I'd rather them come and tell you that they killed, that, that, that I'm in prison, or better than they killed me because I didn't have a gun. That's how bad uh, things I would do. And now look at me. This is my gun. This is my sword. This is my weapon. Amen. This is my weapon. Amen. I put those foolish things behind me. I put that foolish life behind me. And I'm asking you to do you to do the same thing. Stop. Surrender to the Lord. Give Him everything. Stop. Stop asking why. And just do it because the Word says to do it. It says, be holy for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. Right? So I put scriptures in here and everything. It says, uh, there's another one. Be a doer of the Word. We're, we're talking, we're on the book of James over here. On uh, Wednesday, we're on the book of James, Nacho and uh, Pastor George, and 
There's one, uh, there's a scripture in uh, James 1, 22 says, be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, right. be doers of the word, right? We talked about uh, putting your faith into action, right? Let me tell you something, if, if, if I'm, I'm truly a born again, uh, blood-bought Christian, I'm not gonna be able to keep doing the same thing over and over. I'm not gonna keep, and be able to keep partying, keep drinking, keep arguing with my family, keep Whatever, it, it may be pride. It may even that you do none of this being prideful, being ugly with your wife, being ugly with your husband. It, it could be anything that's separating you from God. You know, worry, it could be worrying, it's a sin to worry. It could be anything that's separating you from God. You've you got you to gotta take the step of faith and stop doing it. Because we see that if you're lukewarm, I mean, the way I read it, let's go back to this, it says if you're lukewarm, that he will spit you out, right? I mean, what does that sound like? Does that sound like you're what says and then he spits you out of his belly or what? I don't know. Like you gross him out. Yeah, you gross him out, right? Like I said, the, 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 the Lord Jesus is holy. His Father is holy. Yes. You know, the reason Jesus Christ came back and were able to be saved is because he became the sin of the world. Does everybody really realize what it means? That it says that he became number one the transgressor. He became sin. What does that mean? That he actually became you and my sin. That's right. And this is the proof. So he got on the cross. He was hanging there. He was nailed, right? And, and it came to a point where he says, My Lord, my God, my Lord, my, right, my God, why have you forsaken me? Did God really forsake him? No, but... All that sin that was on him separated him from the presence of the Lord, right? Separated him from the presence of the Lord. He became the sin of the murderer, the rapist, the, the, uh, the child predator, whatever you want to call the a pedophile. He became uh, a, a prostitute, a drug addict. He became our sin. All the sin of the world was put on him. He felt the pressure of all the sin. But you know what? Uh, and, and he became sin. He, and, and you know what? I realized that he became sin. And that's the way he's able to be our Lord and Savior. He's able to come to the prostitute and feel what she went through because he became that sin. He's able, right? He's able to, he's able to, to minister to her. He's able to minister to the murderer. He's able to minister to the, to the rapist. He's able to go and beat him at third level because he became that sin. He became that sin. He came for the lost, not for the for the found. He came for the for the sick, right? Not the, the people that are well. He came for the ones that were that were put to the side, right? So he 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 he, he got crucified for us. He went to hell three days. You know he went to hell three days, right? Some people when I say this, they say he didn't go to hell three days. Yeah, he went to hell three days, and he took the keys. I say he took the keys from Satan. That's from right. Hell the grave. And he arose the risen Savior. Right? Amen. 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 And everybody says, well, everybody says, well, how do you know that he rose because he rose? I mean, how do you know that he didn't sin? I know that he didn't sin because he rose from the dead. Amen. Right? Because if he had any sin in him, he wouldn't have been able to rise from the dead. Right? That's right. Right? So he rose from the dead. He defeated death. He has the keys to this world. Right? So stop sinning, stop sinning, walking. He, and he also came as a man to show us that you could walk and talk and be productive in society without sinning through him, right? Not in our own strength, through his strength, right? We could, through Jesus Christ, we could come and walk and be sinless. People say, oh, you're just being proud to say that you can be sinless. No, the Bible says that, not me. The Bible says that you can do all things through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because that's right. right? Yes. He says you can do all things to him. He says that we're above and not below. We're the head and we're not the tail. Right? right? That's right. We say that we say he says that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? Amen. We're more than conquerors. Yes. Amen. So so repent, he's coming. Wake up, he's coming. Mm -hmm. I want to read you some of the last scriptures over here. I want you to just and let me tell you something. Um, I was watching this show, and there were these Satan worshippers, and they were saying, they were saying, uh, 
oh, when the devil comes, he's going to fight with God. He's going to get Jesus. Do you know that the Bible says that he don't even fight? That's right. My dad used to say when I was younger, take care of my light work. When there'll be some, remember that? That's what, that's what God's going to tell the Archangel Michael. Take care of my light work. Put this man in chain. That's right. Put this uh, dragon in chain. You know, he don't even fight. He don't even fight Satan. Satan's been defeated on the cross. Come on. Yeah. Amen. He's been defeated on the cross. That's right. He's been defeated on the cross. That's right. He don't have no power, brothers. He don't have no power in this world. He has limited power. He only has what you give him. Right? It says that we walk on serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt us. You heard David yeah. say that. Nothing. But you have to take authority over the devil, over the, over the serpent. You have to take authority over him. It says in uh, Revelation uh, chapter 22, verse 12, it says, Behold, I'm coming soon, and my reward is with me. I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha, and I'm the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexual immorality, the morality ones, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves practicing falsehood. I am Jesus. I have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root, of, the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Yes, I am coming soon. He's coming. I think that's about it. I, I can stop right now, but we're already on time. And, and, I, okay. and, and time. you know what? I don't want to go over your time, but I just came to encourage you in saying that he's coming. Wake up. Come on, scream up. Wake up, everybody. Wake up. He's coming. Amen. He's coming. He's coming. Let me just say one more thing. Uh, who knows? We have a scholar here. We have not true. We have... I, I call Johnny a scholar too when I have when I when I have to ask I call Johnny, I call Pastor George. You know? And they can tell you right now, all this Bible, the prophecies, everything that was written to this point to revelation has happened. Just the way the Bible said it was gonna happen, right? Just the way I mean, I'm talking about detail that that it has to be God. Right. Detail. And revelation is about to take place. We don't know when. But I'm going to tell you that in, in, in Jerusalem right now, they have um, they have got five, and all this history from the beginning of when they were going to try to build the temples, there hasn't been heifers without spot or blemish, right? They found five of them already. They shipped them to Israel. They're going to start building the temple. The temple where Satan desecrates, the Antichrist desecrates. It's already being lined up. There's war in Israel right now. There's war in Russia right now. Right? The Russians are fighting. There may be war in the United States. We need to go into war. But uh, don't keep your eyes on that. Don't fear for the Lord is with you. He will never leave you. Don't forsake you. Don't fear those things. Fear the one that can destroy your soul and send it to hell. Not the one that can destroy your body. Destroy your soul. Fear him. You know, the fear of the Lord... When, when I said yes, let me tell you, it's real funny. When, when I said yes to George, I talked to Dr. George, Bob and then we went to go eat, remember? They told me, Lou, we want to use you all. I said, you know what? I said yes. Around a week or two later, I, I used to say I feared the Lord. I didn't fear the Lord. But all of a sudden, the fear of the Lord came upon me. The fear of God came upon me because I didn't want to get up here and say something to dishonor him. That's right. I didn't want to get up here and say something to make you stumble. That's right. I didn't want to get up here and say, oh, you could drink, you could smoke a little bit, you could drink a little bit. It's a lie from the pits of hell. It's a lie. Why would I tell you to do something that has led you down to your knees, that makes you cry at night, that, you, that you're tired of doing? Why would I tell you to do something that is not right to do, right? The hardest thing to do is the right thing. The right thing, my grandfather used to tell me, you know what the, what the right thing is to do? And I said, what? He said, it's the hardest thing to do. That's how you know it's the right thing. That's right. And he used to tell me, that. I said, what do you mean? He says, anything hard, the right thing to do is always the hardest thing to do. 
but stand up like a man and do it. He used to tell me that. He used to talk to my ear. And you know what, he's, he's been gone a while, but, but I still hear his voice. I still hear my grandma Minnie's voice telling me, don't tell your right hand and your left, uh, your, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. I said, where does it come up? And you know what? It's in the word. I used to read this word. <laughs> That's right. And, and Amen. I would, in the middle of me reading the word in prison, I used to cry. My family had been speaking mm. word over me since I was a little kid. So encourage your kids, I'm telling you, encourage your kids. The Barreto family has a big family. What I love about them, they all here. They all love the Lord. They all love the Lord. They're here, right, George? All of them here. That's your responsibility. Johnny's sons all know of the Lord. Follow son know of the Lord. David's everybody. That's your responsibility is to make your kids go. My grandmother and my grandfather used to my grandfather used to tell me, he used to call me little Louis. He used to say, little Louis. I said, what? You're going to? Go to sleep. I used to sleep between him and my grandmother, but I stayed with her. He'd go, remember, we're going to get up at 7 o'clock. I'm getting up at 7, you're getting up with me, and you're going to go to church. <laughs> you, don't, you don't got no, he'd tell me, you don't got no choice. You're Amen. going to church. And you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. At first, I used to act like I was mad. I'll get there, and I start singing with him. I still remember the songs I used to sing with him. And, 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 it, and it got me used to the Lord's Day, the Sabbath. It got me used to it. That's what you got to get your kids used to serving the Lord and, and resting on the Sabbath and giving them everything on the Sabbath. you gotta, you got to do it, man. That's your responsibility because the Lord is coming. He's coming. The end of the world is coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. And it says that if, that if you're, that the ones that are waiting for the Lord, that there's a crown, I think it's the crown of righteousness, waiting for the, uh, you get a crown just for waiting for the appearance, for the appearing of the Lord. The people that are waiting for the Lord, there's a crown in store for you. It's called the crown of righteousness. Just for waiting for him. Right. Just for living a holy life. Just There's a crown of a, a, a corruptible crown. There's all kinds of crowns. But one of the crowns is the crown of righteousness. Waiting for him. Waiting for him. When he's coming. Oh, is it? there he is. There he's coming. Waiting for him. You know, you used to wait for your dad. You used to wait for your kid. You used to wait for your wife. You used to wait for your girlfriend coming. Hey, wait for the Lord coming. Mm. Yes. Come on, man. That's Come on, right. somebody. Amen. Is for us to rush what God is doing. 
I don't want to ever trade quality for quantity. Does that make sense? And, and so, so I'm going to ask you this one time. I'll never ask you again. But if you would please do that this, this morning. God got a hold of a bunch of people up here at this altar. And I saw the youth coming up here and the children coming up here without anybody telling them. And they started laying hands on people and praying. That's a God thing. That is a God thing. Sister Chapa back there in the back told me last week. Amen. Amen. Sister Chapa back there in the back told me last week her heart was real hard physically. Like, like it felt hard. Stay up here with me, brother. Oh, all right, all right. So, so, and she said that my nephew Leo laid hands on her and prayed over her. And whatever she was feeling went away. That's a God thing. Yeah. And I ask one thing before we dismiss in prayer, and it's this. Our kids are not perfect. Our kids mess up every day. What I'm going to ask you not to do as parents and grandparents and great-grandparents is don't, don't throw it at their face. Because you'll turn them off from God, and you'll answer for it. Not to me, but to God. And, and that's a scary place. Louis talked about the reverential fear of the Lord. That's what he's referring to. And so I'm going to ask you to encourage them. Because they're the future of not only this church, but whatever church God places them in. And you can be a part of that, or you can be contradictive to it. I would encourage you to, be, to impart into that. And to say, you know what, keep going. Okay. They're not going to be perfect. They're not supposed to. Well, none of us are. According to scripture... He who has begun a good work in us shall see it to full completion until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In short, the translation according to George is, you ain't going to be perfect until you're face to face with Jesus. And so he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enter into your rest. Amen. That's what we all want to hear. And if you don't, make it your goal today. Lord, I'm going to live a life worthy of when I come to you. Not earning my way to heaven and trying to do good deeds. That, that ain't going to get you there. That ain't going to get you there. But live out loud for Jesus. Amen? Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and God has been tugging at your heart, we need more word like this where we talk about the coming of Christ because that's what we should be looking forward to. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, God is tugging at your heart and you say, you know what, today I want to give my life to Christ. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. It says that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God, that he died for your sins and on the third day that God raised him from the dead, the Bible promises that you shall be saved. I tell you this every Sunday, but let me tell you something else. If you want to look it up for yourself, it's in Romans chapter 9 and Romans chapter 10, what I just quoted to you. All you got to do is go in there and look for it. The only thing I haven't done is give you the page number because I don't know what version you're reading. But if you go in there and look for it for yourself, you'll see it for yourself. So you can shut all the naysayers up and all, the, all these people who think that they know more than everybody else. And you can tell them this is what the word of God says. It doesn't matter if you're Protestant, Catholic, or Jew. The Bible says the same thing in every Bible that you open. So I would challenge you to open it up and read it for yourself. And to declare and to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus so that you may be saved. What I don't want to happen is for you to walk out of here because none of us are promised tomorrow. And for you to hit, get hit by a truck or a bus and you die and you wake up in hell instead of heaven when all you had to do was surrender your life to Jesus Christ. So with all of that being said and with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and this morning God is tugging at your heart, I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand and put it right back down. Hallelujah. Hands are going up all over this room. You see that, bro? That's the fruit of the labor that God put in your heart. Right there. You see that? Those are crowns according to scripture. Those are, those are jewels in, in the crowns. Amen? Because you were bold enough and brave enough to speak the name of the Lord Jesus from this pulpit. God has anointed that. It's never in vain. It's always worth it right here. It's always worth it. It's always worth the sleepless night. It's always worth the fights. It's always worth the battles. Amen? Amen? It's always worth the attacks. Because somebody here needed to hear the word of God this morning. And so right there where you're at, saying a prayer won't save you, but transferring your trust and surrendering your life to Jesus Christ according to the Bible, that will save you. 
So right there where you're at, I don't know how else to do it other than to call upon the name of the Lord and to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. So I'd like to lead you in that if, that, if you'll permit me. Would you say, Heavenly Father, I come before you right now and I confess to you that I believe in my heart that you died for my sins. That you sent your one and only son to die for my death. And right now in this moment, I call upon your name. I stand on your word. And I believe that by doing this, you'll save me. So Lord, by faith, I confess you as Lord, Master, and Savior of my life. Please come in and take over. I relinquish and surrender all control to you. You get the glory and you get the honor. Thank you for saving a sinner like me. Thank you for defeating death, hell, and the grave. And Lord, that I may be ready for when you come back for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God the glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in a song in my head every time we're about to dismiss it. It's like different songs, right? But today it's like, look what the Lord has done, has done. I get excited, man. We woke up on the devil this morning. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Have I got a word for you next week? Please come. God is moving in this church. Invite your friends. Invite your invite your children. Invite your enemies. Todos. Trae los todos, right? Bring them all. God will save them. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. I told you he wasn't done. No, I, want, I wanted to say that, um, no, um, just keep praying for your grandchildren. My grandmother got to see me do this. And uh, I don't know if she ever knew that her prayers were going to leave me up here. But I really believe in God. Thank you, Grandma. I love you. Praise God. Pray Amen. Don't stop praying for your kids. And he said, don't stop praying for your kids. Amen. This is a testament of, of God's answered prayer, Amen. his grandma's prayer. Amen. Amen. She pray on her knees all the time. She told me. Wow. Praise Amen. God. We're going to pray to dismiss. Don't give up praying for your family. One day you're going to see them here worshiping with you. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. We thank you for this time together. Lord, what a beautiful moment. I'm glad that we were all able to be witnesses that you never stop answering prayers. You are faithful. And Lord, I pray this, Lord, that you would launch a revival that would take place not only in the city, not only in this neighborhood, not only, not only in this state, Lord, not only in the United States, but worldwide, Father God. And that we would be ready for your return. Father, that we would always be looking to the sky for our salvation is near. Lord, I pray that you would be with us until we meet again, until we come together, that we would be ambassadors of your presence, carriers of your love and your mercy, your grace and your forgiveness, that we would show the world what Jesus looks like by our conduct. And when they look into our eyes, that they would not see anything else but Jesus Christ. I pray these things over your people. And until we meet again, I give you the priestly blessing. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. In Jesus' precious and holy name, Journey to the Cross Church, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week.